A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So in this video, I'm gonna talk all about four rules. When I say rules, I don't really like the word rules. Um, I don't know why I used it in the title, um, but I couldn't think of anything better to say. Um, but it's not about things like uh, intersection of the thirds or the golden triangles or whatever. It's, it's more about sort of methodologies or things that I always follow that I think my images have. I've been looking at my images recently and there's just four things that just stand out to me. So I thought it'd be really useful that if I sort of shared what they are. The things that I do look for in photos, but I probably didn't purposely think about it um, in the past, um, but I definitely look for these four things when I'm trying to shoot and I think this video just ties it all together nicely. And also what's really important to say is that this is about composition. It's the four things in composition that I think are super important. Obviously there's the light and the subject and there's timing, which those, those three things are so important in, in photography, but this is all about composition, making sure your composition is just nailed basically. So the first one, let's get into them, is balance and, and how important balance is. And I, I'll show you actually on, on here. So we've got an image here from the Lake District. And I think this is a good example of why, why balance is important because really this isn't very balanced. We've got you know quite a defined number of things on the left hand side. So we've got this ridge line here. We've got this grass here. And then we've got this sort of mountain range here. I know we've got a mountain range there as well. But these things are all on this side of the image. And then on this side of the image, there's not a lot. So there's not a lot of balance to that. And balance isn't so much about symmetry. It's, it's more about the visual weight of the elements and how important that is. And I want to show you some images that are balanced and some are Im imbalanced um, or unbalanced. And then hopefully that will give you a better idea. Okay, so let's have a look at an image that's balanced. This is a, a woodland scene from close where I live in the summer. And you can see that this is quite nicely balanced. We've got these two trees here, um, and you know the, the eye just sort of goes straight into the middle of it. There's balance in that the tree is at the bottom of the frame, and then the top part of the frame is a similar type of uh, luminosity. And the colors are all balanced as well. So it's a very balanced image. It's nice on the eye, and that sort of thing works really well for woodland photography. Um, so, yep, so that's, that's a good example. This is another example of something where we've got two things of equal visual weight that are opposing um, a diagonal. Um, so this works quite well because those two things balance each other out. You don't have to have things like that that balanced it. And this image actually would e look equally well if we just got rid of the rock. So if the rock just disappeared now, you could see that, yep, this image is, is still okay because it's got asymmetry in it. And a lot of balance comes from the use of symmetry, asymmetry. It's why when you start photography that a lake looks fantastic because it's, it's, well, it's well balanced. Whereas this image here is an image that works but isn't symmetrical. And I think the reason this works is because we've got some repeating elements, so these um, islands, and your eye uh, and, and your brain sort of work together to understand what's going on here. And I also think that this sort of slight strip of um, sand going all the way across as well connects the things together. So I think this works quite well uh, as, as an image just on its own. So balance is something that you've just got to think about in terms of what looks right. It's, it's often whether an image looks right or looks wrong um, is, is balance. Again, this image works well because we've got this really strong cloud on the left hand side and this mountain and the, the, those two strong visual elements are opposing diagonals and they work really well together to balance the image. The other thing you can do to balance an image is just use colors. Um, and what I always like to do is have diagonals going through images. Um, that might be a diagonal um, like we've got in this image, where we've got a diagonal of the actual clouds and then the mountains. And in this image, we've got a diagonal of a waterfall coming, coming through. Um, and then the either side of that diagonal, if you have similar things, and they don't have to be similar shapes, they can be similar colors. And in this case here, you can see that we've got some bracken that's you know a reddish color there and then we've got these berries on this rowan tree which is reddish and those two things sort of complement each other and help to balance the image there's also similar tones at the top and bottom of the image which help to balance it 
Um, and then finally, whilst we're talking about balance, then we've got an image like this, which was this stunning location in um, Iceland, which um, I'll link a video here if you've not seen this video when I took this, because I got quite excited. But what makes it is, 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 is this, this little curve here, this curve of the lake here and these two things just complement each other and help to balance the image. If this was all cloud, I don't think it'd work as well because this side of the image would have been um, too, too heavy. The second one is flow. And flow is all about how you look through an image. So it's how um, your eye sort of looks around an image. So the first example of flow is this shot that I took here. And this is um, this amazing heather. And I think, um, I've, I've talked about this before actually, but we've got this nice flow going all the way through to the rock. There's also um, flow down in here because this dark color um, pulls your eye down into the lighter color because the lighter color is more dominant. We've also got some lines here that are also leading your eye into the image. So that all helps you to move your eye around the image um, and yeah, it makes the image look fantastic. Another good example of flow is where you have an image like this where there are elements that are similar within the scene. So I've got a tree here, I've got some trees in the background, I've got a tree here and a tree here. And a top tip is if you're trying to do something like this, then try and make sure that they're connected by diagonal lines. And this makes quite a strong flow around the image. Um, and then we've also got some lines going in here and here and here and here as well. So this all helps you to read the image a little bit better for the viewer to spend longer on the image, which is what you're trying to do. And flow is, is, is so, so important. For instance, this image here, I feel like you, the, the flow isn't great on it. It's a nice image, it looks, looks quite nice, but you spend a little bit of time on this side of the image and then to this side of the image, then to this side of the image, but you don't, you don't know where your eye is meant to go in it. Um, there's no you know, definite destination for your eye. And although you don't always have to have a destination for your eye, I feel like in a scene like this, it just becomes a little bit more complicated and what you want to try and do in Woodland is, is simplify it. Um, and there's, there's no really leading lines in this particular image. Um, and again, the same for this one here. So we've got this beautiful water at the bottom, we've got this really nice mountain at the top, and then we've got this really sort of flat bit of water in the middle, and it just doesn't connect very well together. What I should have done in this image is I should have just got a little bit lower and reduced that mid-ground there, and then that would really improve the composition. Because I feel like the flow in this image is great at the bottom, is okay at the top, but it doesn't connect the two things together very well. And that's really, really important. The other thing I perhaps could have done is just move to the side and that would have created a stronger diagonal in the image. Whereas this one, um, I feel like there's a really good, this is one of my favorite images of all time, but I feel like there's a really nice flow in this image. So if we just go and have a, have a look at this image, you can see that we've got some nice triangles. So we've got a triangle there, a triangle there, and then we've got repeating triangles all over the place down here. And what happens is that your eye connects those things together. And because this image is just the same tonality, it's the same sort of color tones as well, then these things just connect really well together and, and your eye just can go round and round the image. Um, and, and then there's also a really nice strong diagonal through it all as well. So you can see here that this diagonal sort of connects to these um, as well. So diagonals, triangles really help to flow um, your eye around the image. Any leading lines, that's why an S-curve works, a path, anything like that can massively help your composition. Okay, onto something a little bit more complicated in terms of flow, and this is actually one of my favorite shots. And, and I feel like the reason this works is that there's a waterfall flowing through, so that helps. But I've, cr I've created something that's quite simple in terms of um, the color palette within this. So because there's quite a range of different textures, I feel like if you had a lot of colors in it as well, it wouldn't work so well. But I've got these really strong, it's almost like monochrome apart from these greens in it. So those greens then help, again, I've got a triangle here and they help to connect things together in the image and that helps to flow the eye around the image which means that you stay longer on the image which means that you more notice more things on the image 
Flow is so important in an image and it's really, really important to think when you're taking your image. Just think about that. Think about how the eye is gonna flow around. The obvious things are paths and S curves, but there's lots of other things that you can do as well. So it's well worth trying out. On to the third thing, the third thing that I think is really important in, in composition. And this, I don't really know what to call it really, probably the dynamism of a, a shot, maybe the energy of a shot, the tension that a shot creates. But it's something that just makes you think, whoa, that, you know, that, that's got something about it. Um, energy is probably the best, best word really. Now you can do that really easily if you shoot a shot like this which is, or a shot like this, where it's got water in it, because obviously water's got some energy and it creates um, a sense of movement and means that the image is, is gonna stand out a little bit more. Um, so water is great and a great way of creating energy or dynamism in a shot like, like these two images. But how do you do it if you don't have moving water? So if you're not shooting seascapes or you're not shooting waterfalls, is there any other way that you can create a more dynamic or more energetic image that's going to um, you know, hit, the, hit the viewer there and, and make them think twice about, about the shot. Well, there is actually, and if we look at this shot here, you can see this was taken at the same time that I took that shot of the rock. And I feel that if you use um, things like clouds or anything that's got movement in it, so anything that we perceive as humans will be moving, and then you arrange them in the image in a way that um, is almost looks, whoa, you've must have, you must have just captured that just at the right moment in time. Then that image then has a little bit of energy. It has a little bit of something. So this is such a good example because this tree is caught between these um, clouds. And I did, I watched these clouds go past. I saw them form a gap and then I thought, oh, I could put the tree in there. But then when you look at this image, it's got a little bit of energy. It's got something just a little bit more than just a, an image of a tree or wall and some clouds. If the clouds had just been randomly um, laid out there, it wouldn't have quite that sort of energy about it. And it's the same with this image here. This is an image that I took a long time ago where this cloud came down. I've talked about it so much in my videos, but what hit me the other day is that the reason it works is it's got a bit of energy. Cloud moves um, just like water. And if something moves like that, and you can capture it and capture that moment in time, then you're going to create energy and dynamism and you know something about your, your photo. So that is really good. And there's other ways you can do that as well. You know, this image here has got these grasses that are moving and if you just get the shutter speed right and you get those grasses moving, then that can create a, a, a lot of energy in an image as well. Think about anything that moves and how you can incorporate that into your landscape shot and how, um, you know, people can think, ah, oh, that's special, you've timed that well. You know, things like sunsets work well, I think, because of, because of that. Anything where there's a little bit of thought gone into the timing. You know, this is another good example of something that's got energy. This is a composite of two shots, um, one with a long exposure, one with a shorter exposure for the clouds. But I think that creates a bit of energy. It creates a bit of tension between the clouds at the top and this smooth water at the bottom. The smooth water has got this calm feeling, whereas the clouds have got a little bit more of an angry feeling. They're almost like you know having that sort of heavy presence on this island. And again, that's telling a story and it's creating a little bit of energy. You can create tension as well, which creates energy in, in a shot. And this is a good example. You know, this church is right on the edge of the frame. And by being right on the edge of the frame, it creates a little bit of tension. The mountain's chopped off. And because I've chopped the mountain off, um, it's created a little bit of tension. So this image just has got a little bit more energy than an image where that would just be of the church in the middle and the mountain in the background. And <laughs> You know, you can do all sorts of things like this. Just think about your image and how you can create energy in your image and you'll be surprised at just how much it'll elevate your composition. Okay, before I get onto the fourth point, um, um, something that's so important, uh, I'd love it if, if you have enjoyed this, this video so far, just to click that like button, it means a massive amount to me. Um, I just want to have your energy <laughs> in this video. So just click the like button if you've liked it. And um, if you're not subscribed, then consider subscri subscribing. Okay, the fourth point is all about depth in an image. 
Um, and you can create depth in lots of different ways. Obviously, the obvious one is fog in a woodland creates depth because your eye perceives darker um, luminosities closer to the camera and um, lighter luminosities further away from a camera because that's what you're used to in nature. If something's a long, long way away, like a mountain, then it's going to look lighter than a mountain that's closer. Um, and similarly with everything. So as soon as you do that with an image, you're going to create a bit of depth. And this image that I took uh, last year is one of my favorite you've seen it so many times before enchanted oaks and what's good about it is that uh, I've aligned everything up correctly but it's also got some depth and that depth creates um, you know something that's really powerful you can also create depth just by having things closer to the camera um, and um, if you've got human objects in there or humans then that can help to create depth so for instance in this shot here then this little boat house is, uh, you know what size that boat house is because you know the size a boat would go in it. So you know that that's a little bit of a distance away and then we've got these branches in, in the foreground. So that's creating a little bit of depth to the image. And that just creates something just a little bit more magical because we're, what we're doing as photographers is we're taking the 3D environment and turn it into 2Ds. Um, 2Ds, is it 2Ds? 2D, we're turning it into 2D and, and what we've got to try and do is convey that depth to the viewer. You can also do that, like in this image, with colors. So warmer tones tend to jump out to the viewer, cooler tones tend to fall back to the viewer. So here what I've done is I've just got this lone oak tree right in the middle of, of the image here and it's got these warm tones and these warm tones jump out at you and that's creating a bit of depth. Yeah, I think the clouds in the background also help to convey that depth as well. Uh, you can also use textures and, and changes in shades to convey depth. So here I've got layers within the image. Um, again, those warm tones are jumping forward a little bit, but because I've got this layering to the image, and because then I've got similar objects in the image, these rocks that are getting smaller as you go back, then again, that's conveying depth. There's a great photographer in the UK called Tom Watkinson. Um, I'll, I'll link his Instagram below, but he did a, a series of images that I spotted the other day, which I really loved, and I felt that they conveyed depth really well. Um, so he used a wide angle lens, and you can see this is one of them. And by doing that, he's got the foreground and, and these lines just coming in, so he's got a bit of flow to his image. But then he's got this rock in the background that you know is quite a big rock, but it's quite a long way away. And it's also the drop in luminosity across the shot from the fog also helps to create that depth. So there's a few things going on here. He's got that um, change in perspective using a wide angle lens. He's got the rock, which is a you know a big object further away and, and not as bright. And, and these things are just massively, massively helping to convey depth in the image. His images are really amazing. He's got lots of others from around the UK. So go and check out his, his Instagram. And here's another one. So I hope those four things, balance, flow, dynamism slash energy and depth have, have, have really helped. Go and go and try using them. Um, I'm sure they'll start to elevate your, your compositions in photography. Obviously, you've got to find a good subject. Obviously, you've got to have some good light. Um, but if you try and use those, then, then I'm sure you'll start to um, see, see better photos. Um, before you go, I'd like to thank Squarespace, who are the sponsor of this week's video. Um, Squarespace I'll make it super, super easy for you to build your own website. Now, I have talked about them before a few times, um, but if you are looking to go away from something like Instagram or, or complement Instagram with a website and you want to build a portfolio, then do consider using Squarespace. It makes it super easy, it controls all the sizes, it makes sure that everything works on an iPad or an iPhone or your desktop. You don't have to worry about all that technical stuff. And they've got 24 seven support as well. So go and check out Squarespace at the links here and um, you get 10% off if you use offer code Nigel or go to forward slash Nigel. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have. And until next Sunday, bye. <laughs>